like I said, I, I, my plan was to die at 27. I was going to be the next Jimi Hendrix or Kurt Cobain. I also was tied into the idea that to be in the music scene, you pretty much had to be an alcoholic, mm. which also tied into the void that I had. So I, I came to the realization about six, ooh, six months ago or so, um, 18 months into sobriety, that all through that period, whenever whenever I was getting drunk, it was never to celebrate. It was never to have a good time, although that's what I tell myself. It was to numb myself because life was just too painful. <laughs> it always was because I grew up with ADHD. I was never a normal kid, you could say. And then I got to the point where I could learn guitar. I could grow my hair long and I could initially smoke weed but later on, because I'm lazy and alcohol's e more <laughs> easily accessible than cannabis in the UK, I just get drunk. And like I live bouncing from point to point, being drunk, being hungover, waiting till the next time I could get drunk. And then that came to a head, like I said, just over two years ago now, when I was just continuing to drink for no reason, wasn't even going out to pretend like it was a celebration mm. or a good time. So knocked that on the head. I'm amazed that it took five years from that realization at 27 that I wasn't going to be a rock star to 32 when I was like, actually, I need to also realize that I shouldn't be drinking this much as well. And um, that's one aspect that I'm very much willing to share. What else do you want to know? I'm an open book. Like I've, in the past five years or so, gone on that self-acceptance personal development kind of journey and for the most part I'm a whole lot better but it is a journey and you can always get better no matter what no one okay. hits absolute perfection because then they wouldn't be human agreed well thank you for sharing I appreciate that gotta walk the walk got you have to lead by example if you want other people to be able to share their story, to feel empowered by it, no matter what's happened. Like you have to show that's even possible, right? Yeah. Agreed. We are not our past. That is one thing I have spent a lot of time focusing on is realizing that the only way I'm tethered to my past is if I give it power to hold me back there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it can't be changed. That's the other thing. So you have to see it objectively for what it was, which was what happened. <laughs> and I can't be changed. But there's a, 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 a phrase that I saw that I absolutely loved. I don't know who uh, should be attributed with it, but it said uh, it's never too late to have had a great childhood hmm. because the past happened. Those events cannot be changed, but how you feel and think about them can be changed at any point so it's yes. all about your perception of the past so change that and you can change the story that you tell yourself that you're tethered to mm. like if you're a victim of something are you going to stay in victimhood and wallow and allow it to affect your present and future or are you going to go, ah, oh, that happened. I got through it. Actually, I'm pretty awesome. I could probably take on anything. Hmm. Which one's going to make you feel better in the long run? You know what I mean? Exactly. Is it your kryptonite or your superpower? Which are you going to make it? Sorry, I am such a nerd. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I own that part of me too. <laughs>